barrel or not small talk with a cashier when there's a line behind you so no barrel i think this goes i mean the whole bucket i think when we write our advice guide uh self-awareness is number one and so yes that cashier's got to be there no matter what that cashier is on the clock doesn't matter really to him or her i would imagine you know like i'm sure there's the one who's pride of job of getting the line moving and all that but you being self-aware, you thinking this world revolves around me and my thing. So I'm going to make these people wait while while I do my thing. Never, ever do your thing. Always be aware. So yes, of course, that is how I feel about this as well. However, I've noticed over time that I seem to be the only one who's in a hurry. And I'm like, okay, if I was the cashier, I wouldn't want anybody to talk to me. I would keep my head down and just be like, let's get through this as fast as we can. Efficiency is key. That's what's best for my employer. That's what's best for me, right? Yeah. But again, I'm taking a survey nowadays and I'm like, the cashier looks like they're enjoying this interaction. The person who, the the customer looks like they haven't left the house. It's an old person, doesn't interact with a lot of people. They look like they need this. And the people around me don't seem Aren't like there's here. in any rush because there's a line of five people in it and a line that's empty and a six person just got in the five person line. So they're not in a hurry because they're not looking for the shortest line like I do. I'm the only one who's annoyed right now. Oh, this is bad. So you and I, I uh, yeah, I've never even really considered this, that I was in the wrong of wanting things to move quickly and cleanly and interaction to be kept to a minimum. I mean, I that's just what I'm noticing, you know? Yeah. Like, and so maybe human interaction, like I get enough of it. I get an, I, I am fortunate. I am the Tyler Wright of fortune <laughs> and privilege in this scenario where I have loving family, loving friends, and I don't need more, right? But I think that there's a very lot of number of people nowadays that their main connection to the world is through their phone maybe. And so they go out into the real world and they interact with a human being and they crave it. Yeah. Okay. I'm with you. But if you're going to, yeah, I guess you can't, I guess you can't because I'm not going to put my Tyler Wright of pain on the line. So yeah, I'm going to go barrel, I guess. Just chat away. Like I'm hurry really be damned. Hurry be damned. I would say, yeah. I mean, I, I'm really torn on this one because again, my instinct is just, don't talk, don't waste time. But I guess my advice here would be look around, be be sympathetic or maybe empathetic. Look around and sense who needs what in this moment and suck up your own uh, need for speed and go ahead and give in. If they look like they're really enjoying this, do not crowd them out and give them evil stares. I'm totally with you. Okay, wow. All learning right. moment for you and I, I suppose. Such a huge learning moment. Okay, barrel or non, number two, putting your arm between when hugging another dude. Putting your arm between. Like where oh, you go, you grip under. the hands first, like you, you do like a handshake first, and then you yep. go in for a hug and you embrace them with the other hand, but your two hands are interlocked in between your chests so that there's a little bit of a barrier. I hear you. I hear you. And now I can picture it cleanly and no, you boom to the pull in, engage both arms. So you go fully wrapped, both arms around the uh, back with chest I'm, touching. I'm thinking about this now though, like there is an important time for the uh, sep the degree of separation. The degree of separation is for the one, the uh, person who's more than acquaintance, but less than friend, right? Uh, or uh, it, there's the, I like the uh, slap hug, for somebody who you're really happy, happy to see the slap slight pull is someone like, Hey, I like them both. They both have a place in the nonverbal, uh, what, the pantheon. Yeah. So what you're saying is there is no universal policy. The, the move absolutely represents your deeper feeling towards that person. Precisely. And not okay. if I, if I grab and we go in, you know, I mean, yeah, because not everybody should want to be best friends with everybody too. Like my daughter is in a place now where she wants me, I don't know why she wants this, but wants me to be best friends with her friends, dads, 
which were totally cool. Me and her friend's dads are totally cool. I really like all of her friend's dads. Uh, I have my best friends. I can't just make all of a sudden, you know, I don't know why you need, it's great. Um, but they don't want me to be their best friend either, right? We have our friends and we have each other and all of like the complex web of personal interaction is important. If it was all flat, if everyone was either 100% your best friend or you didn't know them, that would be a weird way to live. Yeah, completely. Well, <clears throat> with this question presented, what I thought initially was the reason dudes are doing that thing where you keep your arms in between you when you go for the hug and you just go with a one arm embrace around the back was because of a discomfort with their willingness to be intimate with a male friend. But you're right in that that same male might go full embrace with a different male. Yes. This is just an actual nonverbal communication on where you lie on the spectrum of love for me. If you have never hugged another man as a man, then I think you need to go look deeply in the mirror at your own why you're not doing that. You know, like you don't have to publicize it. You don't have to make it a deal, but it's something that you need to think about. Correct. Yeah. Find a male that you are comfortable with giving a full embrace and squeeze exactly. tightly. Exactly. Okay, good. Also, wow. Okay, powerful stuff today. Yep. All right. Barrel or non number three, chewing with your mouth open. Oh, this is a no barrel David Lee scales. And I'm trying to think if I do this. I'd... Well, here's why I bring it up. I don't know. This was a lesson that we were taught when we were very young, but I don't know any adults who actually implement this lesson. That's They're, true. Everybody chews with their mouth open. I think it's a bridge too far if you're talking with a mouthful of food. Of course, you're that's exactly obvious. Right. But you're there's exactly no right. nobody that like it's actually very uncomfortable. Weird. To keep it's your lips weird. And to chew. It's more, I don't know if it's drawing air over your food accentuates the flavors or whatever, but it's actually more comfortable and pleasurable to chew with your mouth open. I totally agree. I never thought about this. This is a wonderful barrel or not. And you're exactly right. That chewing with your mouth closed is weird. Yes. Talking with food in your mouth is a no-no. Maybe smacking, like really calling attention. Yeah. If somebody sees you chewing your food because you are making it that obvious. That's uncool too. But everyone else, just chill, man. Just in the, because if I saw somebody really purposefully keeping their lips closed, I would think you're a weirdo. You're, it's, yeah. it's physically uncomfortable to do. Like you strain to keep your lips sealed while you're chewing a large weird. bite of food. And you don't want to be weird. I think one of the other points of the show is don't be weird. Don't be like an, a weird outlier. That's true. And it's a I'm social not. norm now to chew with your mouth open. So yeah. be normal. Have at it. Have at it. Yeah. Do as everyone else does. Agreed. Okay, good. Okay.